Section 3.1 is called Numeration Systems. Um, some of what this section is going to do is to go be looking back historically at some of the numeration systems of the past. Um, to start with, the system that we have today is called, and it actually is, the Hindu Arabic numeration system. That's what we use. This is a numeration system that was developed by the Hindus and transported to Europe by the Arabic. All numerals are constructed from 10 digits. What are the 10 digits that we have? Oh, good. Yeah, we don't have a digit 10. It's 0 through 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 9. Okay. We have a place value system as well. Our place value is based on powers of 10. Right? Every place is worth 10. 10 squared, 10 cubed. It's a power of 10. So we have what's called a place value system, a place of 10. Um, I would like for you to think about um, why it is or why you think it might be that we have a base 10 number system. Any guesses as to what that might be? What do you think? It's because we have 10 fingers. That's, that's why. Okay? So we're going to encounter another group of people here in a little bit, and they have a different place value system. We're going to think about what they did and why they did it too. But it's because you have 10 fingers. So if you had been born, and we had all been born, not just you, but if we had all been born with eight fingers, probably have a base eight number system. Okay. Um, I wanted you to remind, or wanted to remind you um, that when you have a power, like this one, it's A to the N. This means multiplication of the letter N A, I'm sorry, the letter A N times. That's what that actually means. And we'll see more about that as we go. All right, so we're going to encounter our first number system, um, and this is the Egyptian number system. And I should have brought today, I actually, I'll bring it next time. I have a necklace with hieroglyphics on it that spell out my name, um, which I think is kind of fun. Um, but they also have hieroglyphics that were our numbers. All right, so go ahead and fill those in, and then we'll talk through them. And I'm not promising to be an artist. I will never have a skill for that. So if you don't like my images, feel free to reference your book for a better picture, because undoubtedly you will find one. Yes, we do, Lauren, pictures. So for all of those artists out there among you, pictures it will be. All right, so these hieroglyphics have different values, um, right? So when we write down our number five, it means five ones, right? It's the same kind of idea for them. We write down one of these symbols, and it means multiple of something. So the first one is a vertical staff, and it looks like our number one. Any guess what its value is? One, yes. So isn't that friendly? Uh, the next one is a heel bone. Looks like a U to me, but it's a heel bone. It actually has the value 10. Um, the next one is a scroll. And a scroll has the value 100. And I hope you can now tell me what the next one would be based on the pattern you're seeing. What do you think a lotus flower is? A thousand. A thousand. Yep. What do you suppose the pointing finger would be? Ten thousand. How about the polywog? There's another couple words for this. But... Polywog. There's different resources that I've had that call it a burbo fish or a whale. Polywog is what your book uses. Polywog. 100,000 is correct. And the last one is the astonished man. And I've actually seen different versions for how this astonished man looks as well. Um, one of the contemporary math books that we used once upon a time drew the astonished man like this. So makes him look like he's like sitting down. You see his legs there and stuff. So your book uses the one that's on here. 
I think he's astonished because he's worth a million. That's what I believe. Yeah, that's, that's what I believe. So he is worth a million. Okay, their system is very easy to write and read numbers in. Okay, so we're going to do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to consider this number, three scrolls and a heel bone. This question, part C, asks us to change that into an actual number. But before we get to part C, they're just asking us what comes before and after this. If we were writing our numbers in order, you know, one, two, three, four, and they were writing their numbers in order, what would they have written before this digit and what would they have written after this digit? And let's actually do the after this digit first, part B, because it's a little easier to do. What do you think would have come after three scrolls and a heel bone? Yeah, three scrolls. I'm not writing my scrolls very well. Let me try that again. Three scrolls, a heel bone, and a staff. Because a staff's worth one. Right? I mean, what do we do to get the next value in our system? Well, we add one to it. So we just add a vertical staff. What do we do in our system to get the number before? Well, we take one away. The problem is that if you take one away, that would be taking a vertical staff away, there's not a vertical staff to take away here. So what do you think you'd have to do? Take away the heel bone and add the nine. You'd have to take away a heel bone and put in nine staffs. Right? You're borrowing. That's what you're really doing. You're turning the heel bone that's worth what? Ten into ten staffs, and then you're taking a staff away. So this would be three scrolls. and nine staffs. And they don't do, it's not a tally system. You can't do four and mark a, mark a line through it. That's not appropriate. Um, you can stack them. So sometimes you'll see this. That's okay. You can stack things if you want. The one of those two would be what you'd see. Okay, so far so good? The number before, the number after. You're just removing a staff because the staff's worth one. Now, the next thing is, part C, we're going to turn this number into our system. So what in the world is a scroll worth? A hundred, right? So what would three scrolls be worth? Three hundred. And I'll take this in a couple of steps just to keep you, keep you um, on track. What would a heel bone be worth? Ten. And we only have one of those heel bones. So we have three hundred from our scrolls. We have ten from our heel bones. So this is the number three ten. 310. Okay, you guys good? Because I think we're changing to somebody else's system next. Oh, we have one more before we change to their system. Sorry. All right, we're going to take a number in our system and write it in their system. So the number is 23,145. So how do I get the 20,000 part of this? I need two of the pointing fingers. Because a pointing finger is worth 10,000. So two of my pointing fingers would be worth 20,000. How do I get the 3,000? Flowers. So I need how many flowers? Three. Three. For the drawing purposes of this? Well, and artistic people, right? Because mine don't look good. There's my 3,000. How about the one? It's in the hundreds place. What would I need? One scroll. The four? Four heels. And the five? Five vertical staffs. Okay. So let's just talk just a touch about this system. Converting in and out of it is not hard. You're just looking at the symbols and you're writing down how many of them there are. It's really not a difficult thing, but it is cumbersome. It is time consuming, um, and so it's not a very efficient system. Agreed? It's effective. We can use it, but it's not efficient. It's not quick. It's not. It's not fast to do. All right? All right. You ready to experience another another number system? There's some drawbacks to this too. Um, obviously, there's no zero. Right? Um, if you have something with a lot, a lot of nines in it, that would be highly unfortunate, wouldn't it? Do you want to draw nine lotus flowers? 
I don't either. <laughs> All right, so yeah, there's definitely some drawbacks to this one. Let's look at another one. These are the Babylonians. The Babylonians have exactly two numerals. One that looks like a triangle and one that looks something like an arrow. Can we ask what the colors are then? I'm okay with you leaving them blank. Yes, yeah, so if you leave them hollow, that's okay. first one, the triangle looking shape, has the value of 1. And the second one, the arrow looking shape, has the value of 10. And hopefully already you're saying, okay, what would I have to do if I wrote the number 10,000 or whatever? Am I going to have to write out that many of these arrows? The answer is no, you don't. Um, in their number system, they have a place value system kind of like us. Right? So when our system, when we see a three in the hundreds place, we don't really think it's three. We know it's three hundreds because the place where it resides, right? The place where it is matters. Well, they have a place value system. It's not base 10, though. It's base 60. Okay. Any thoughts about why they might have chosen 60? 60 fingers. They don't have 60 <laughs> fingers, but good try. That's my best guess as well. We're looking at degrees, minutes, seconds, and, and when you're measuring circles, um, and measurements of circles. Um, so the other thing, too, that you'll notice, and we're going to see this with the Mayans here in a moment, uh, when you multiply 60 times 60, what do you get? That's a good try. Try again. <laughs> it's all right. What do you get? 60 times 60. 360. 360 should sound sort of like something you are very familiar with, besides the circle thing. Days in a year. It's very close, especially when you're looking at something that's as old as we're looking at this number system. 360 is the number of days in a year. So there's also kind of that going on behind the scenes. All right, so let me actually show you something with their system. We have in our system these place values, and I'll just write down four of them. The first value is the ones place, you know, on the far right, just like ours. And then our next place value to the left would be the tens place, right? But theirs is 60. So this place value is actually worth 60. The next place value for us would be 10 squared. But they don't have base 10, they have base 60, so it's 60 squared. It's the 360 that we did before, actually. Three, or not 360, 3600. Yeah, I, I left off a zero when we were talking before. We're going to see the 360 come up in a little bit. What would be the next one? Cubed, right? 60 cubed. And we could keep going with this pattern indefinitely to the left. Agreed? Just like we can with our pattern of our base 10 system. All right, so let's kind of see how their system works. We've got one on your page. It's got lots of triangles and arrows. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we decide where one place value ends and the next one begins. Um, your book will sometimes give you enough space to sort of feel like, oh, that's it. There's a space in it. Um, in their system, they may or may not have actually seen that space there. Or, you know, that's sort of a little bit vague. Like, how much space is enough space to say that my place value changed? Right? Sort of a big question. Um, we are definitely going to understand that whenever the bigger value is preceded by a smaller value, like this value is worth 1, these values are worth 10, right? Well, when it changes from a 1 to a 10, that's definitely, without question, whether there's a space or not, a break in place value. That's the only one you can guarantee that exists. When it goes from 1 to 10, as you're moving from left to right, the place value had to change. After that, you're left sort of at the discretion of what you think you see happening. So on this one, what's underlined on the left could be base 60, and what's underlined on the right, not base 60, but place 60, right? Our place, like our place value of 10, place, place value of 60. And what's underlined on, the, underlined on the right can be the place values of 1. So let's just count for a second. This means that there's one in the 60s place, right? If this is the 60s place. How many are over here in the ones place? 
How much is there? If I count all this up, it's 59. So there's a 1 here, there's a 59 on the right-hand side. Everybody with me so far? Okay, if we wanted to do the number that comes before this, what would we have to do? Take away a 1, and it would be a 1 in the 1's place. So we're going to take away a triangle on the far right. So we're going to have still the first triangle, and I'm going to even draw these, not even hollow, Lauren. Look at this. Do you see what I'm drawing? I'm going to draw them like less than signs. So you guys feel free to do that as well. I'm going to have five of these. And then how many of the tri empty triangles am I going to have? Should be eight, right? So that would be a one in the 60s place and then 58 in the ones place. That's what that would look like. Coming after this number, what Babylonian numeral comes after this value? Okay, so if we took away one of the triangles, what would we have to do to find the number that comes after it? Put an additional triangle. And what happens? Okay. You got it. You guys are catching this. Fabulous. Okay, so if we add another triangle, I have 10 triangles. But 10 triangles is worth the same value as an arrow because that's worth 10. But then if I add an arrow to the five arrows I already have, I have 60, 60 arrows in the, in, the ten, in the ones place. 60 arrows in the ones place, right? 60 value worth of arrows, six arrows. But that's 60 in the ones place. You can't have a 60 in the ones place when it's base 60, just like we don't put 10 in the ones place when we end up with 10 adding something together. We put a zero in the ones place and we carry a one, right? Same thing here. We'd have zero ones left and we'd carry a one into the 60s place. So this would actually become the value double triangle, if you will. But how do you know that that's one sixteen? That is a very, very good question. So if you take a look at part C, that's exactly what it says. How else could that value be interpreted? Two. Right? If you saw that value, two triangles, in fact, you would probably tell me it's worth two. But that's also exactly how you would write the number 120, which is highly unfortunate if somebody owes you $120, right? How would you do bookkeeping? This is not very good. You know, I don't have this problem with the Egyptians. I mean, like, I might have to write lots of symbols, but it was very clear what my numbers should be. All of a sudden now in this system, there's a problem. And the problem is really because I don't have zero, right? I don't have a placeholder. That's how we avoid this issue in our system, right? We put a zero in the ones place. Well, we don't have that with the Babylonians. So this number could also be interpreted as the number two. Let's actually go back to the original number and write out what it should be worth. Well, we said that there is a one that is in the 60s place, so that's worth 60. And then we had a 59 in the ones place. So my original value is the same thing as 60 plus 59, which would be what? 119. Okay, we're going to do one more in the Babylonians. Are you guys ready? No? You ready to let it be a little bit more confusing? Well, there's a reason we don't use it today. I don't know. I've never heard, actually. They all died. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yes, they did, and we stopped using the system, or they did. Somebody did. Um, let's take our number, 43,205, and we're going to put it into their base system. So I'm going to show you how we do that. All right, so we've already kind of established the fact that they have a ones place, and they have a 60s place, and they had one that's worth 60 squared. How much is 60 squared? 3,600. What would we have if we did 60 cubed? Somebody grab a calculator and multiply 60 times 60 times 60 for me. What do you get? 216,000. So the first issue is to recognize that our number is not that big. Everybody with me on that? The biggest value that we have is something smaller than that. Our value is something smaller than that. So we don't need that place system. 
Okay, so what I'm about to teach you, and we'll do more of this next time, is I'm going, to be, I'm going to teach you a division algorithm that's really helpful for working with changing things into other base systems. Anything that goes from base 10 into something else, you can use this for. So what you're going to do is you're going to write like a division bar, but it's going to be like a double division bar. It kind of looks like that. You don't really need it so big on the right. but um, The value that goes underneath the division bar is the value that you are given and you're working with. So in this case, that's the 43,000. 205. That's what's going to go underneath it. And we're going to divide by the biggest value in the base system that we have the option of using. So we wouldn't use 216 because that's 216,000, that's too big. But 3,600 works just fine. And your calculator is going to be your new best friend for doing these problems because you're going to do the division in your calculator. And what I want the answer of is I want to know how many whole number times will 3,600 go into 43,205. I don't want the decimals. There's going to be decimals on most of what you're doing. I want the whole number of times. 12? OK. And then you're going to do the same thing that you do with long division. You're going to multiply 12 times 3,600. So your calculator will do that for you as well. 12 times 3,600. And what do you get? 43,200. And you're going to subtract. So what is 43,205 minus 43,200? It's 5. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to divide it again by the next place value. And I don't care if it goes in zero times, it still needs to be represented. So we're going to put a 60 right here. That's the next place value in their system as we move to the right along the place values. We know this goes in zero times, obviously. And we put a zero down here, and we subtract, and we get the same 5 that we had a moment ago. Now, in this number system, if you skipped that step, it wouldn't hurt anything because they don't have a zero. But some of our number systems do have a zero place value holder kind of thing, and we will need that. So I'm trying to show you this method for the most broadest sense of what you'll be using it for. Okay? All right, the next thing you're going to do then is divide by the last place value, which is 1. Obviously, 1 goes into 5 five times. 5 times 1 is 5. And you subtract and you get your zero. You will always end up with zero at the very end of this process. Okay? Always. But you don't, start the, you don't stop the process until you stop having all of the place values that you have in your system. And so that means you're always going to divide by 1 at the end. Your last step will always be division by 1. All right, so these numbers actually right here are what you need to be able to draw in their system. How do I draw the number 12 in their system? What symbols do I use? Do I use 12 triangles? An arrow and two triangles, right? I don't have a zero. If I did, I'd use the zero symbol next. But I don't have that. I do have a five. So how do I draw five? Five triangles. And if you want, because you feel like it's going to be helpful, you can give yourself a little bit of space right here to draw them. I'm not going to be making sure, double checking that you have that space. But obviously you can tell if you don't leave the space and if they had not left the space, this number all of a sudden looks a lot like the number 17, doesn't it? And again, if somebody owed me $43,205 and they paid me 17 because my bookkeeping was unclear, that would be highly unfortunate. Agreed? I think I should just not, not let anybody borrow money. I think that would probably be my best bet. All right. <laughs> 